So I think this might be the perfect day to see a movie like this. This is my review of A Cure for Wellness. But before I start this review, I want to point out as I was traveling to the theater, it was raining cats and dogs, women, children, men, ladies, girls, guys, boys, running for their lives, surviving this crazy, fun, rainy weather down here in California today. And I thought it was quite fitting because the movie that I was going to see tonight was a very eerie, dark, disturbing, weird look at reality. And I was just enjoying what the weather was outside as I was traveling and going to the theater. And now that I'm home, ready to shoot this review, I can't even shoot it in my house right now because the power is entirely out in this neighborhood that I live in. Let me give you an idea, let me show you really quick. So this is what uh, I'm seeing right now. There is my house and there is the rest of the neighborhood right there. There is no power at all and I thought, wow, even more eerie after seeing this really weird, crazy, disturbing movie that I'm going to give you my opinion about right now. So uh, let's turn on some lights. Um, yes, let's turn on some lights and uh, tell you how I felt about A Cure for Wellness, a movie that I was very excited to see, having been a somewhat fan of director Gore Rabinsky, but let's get some lights on in here really quick. There we go, there's some lights. Hello everyone, welcome. I've wasted already 90 seconds of your time. Let's just waste a few more minutes. And welcome to this review of A Cure for Wellness. Now this film is Gore Rabinsky's latest film. It's an R-rated movie. Normally he's known for making PG-13 family films, though he has dabbled in R-rated movies like The Mexican and The Weatherman and this movie and that movie. And of course he's had some success with the Pirates of the Caribbean, Caribbean trilogy and then had some not so success with films like The Lone Ranger. Some of these movies I love, some of these movies I like, some of these movies I think are okay, but this one actually looked quite interesting. And it's an original film. Where can you say that nowadays where everything is a superhero movie or a, a, a reboot or remake? You know, this is an original film written, co-written by Gore Rabinsky himself. Now the film stars Dane DeHaan, Jason Isaac and a newcomer named Mia Goth and there's other people in the film but the movie centered in Switzerland somewhere in the Switzerland countryside where this castles on this hill and Day Dehan is working for this company and their CEO for the company has gone missing and so he has to go to Switzerland to uncover this really weird strange mystery this care center that's up in the mountains, this place for wellness, this place for help, this place to hopefully cure your insanity or whatever you're going through. And it's a place for rich people, people that can afford it and stuff like that. So it's not it's not for everyone. As you can see, the CEO was there and he, you know, Dave DeHaan, who's a very creepy looking guy and really great at being a creepy looking character, was fitting for this film. This movie is a visual masterpiece. And that's about it. <laughs> it is so interesting. I have to say, 65% of the time, as we are getting to know these interesting characters and find out who Jason Isaac is, he kind of runs this facility. And there's this little girl running around. She's a little girl, but she's probably played by a 20 some year old, played by Mia Goth this new actress I've seen she's eerie and the music is quite creepy and it kind of that the music kind of centers around her singing um, not songs by any means but just her voice and stuff and that and it's got a great visual style I have to say as I said before the movie is visually stunning it is a masterpiece as a visual spectacle and it's quite interesting as the characters uncovering all of these ideas and what is really going on in uh, this facility. But as the revelations pile up, I, I felt that I wasn't really learning anything new or seeing anything that I hadn't seen before. Yes, I was in a beautiful location with a beautiful set and I was in a, uh, a scene, v visuals that you don't normally see very often and there's some really great creepy things that happen some gross things that happen uh, you know you're centered in a part of the world that I'm not too familiar with so 
I kind of feel for the character. He's kind of pushed in this world. So for the most part, I was really interested in what was going on. I was like, man, I really hope this has some amazing payoff. If it does, if it explores some really weird ideas and maybe leaves you questioning your own reality, your own sanity, then this might be one of the best films that I've ever seen. But as I said before, visually stunning, visual masterpiece, but it plays it extremely safe as we are discovering what is happening in this film. And I felt really cheated. I felt like I was being punished for something that I should have been rewarded for. That's how I felt as I was watching this visually stunning, amazing film. I, I, I felt like I had been really bad and I didn't deserve what I was getting. I was like, you know, I've invested some time in this. I actually cared about Dane DeHaan. I was wondering, like, what is actually going on? And the movie is just so damn beautiful. And, but in the end, it's so extremely misguided. And the ending just becomes like your typical ending with these kind of movies. It's like, you know, we just, we're not really interested in exploring any more ideas or giving you something interesting to think about or taking you into a dark realm and then making you leave the theater feeling gross and creepy and weird and eerie. Those eerie feelings that I wanted to leave after I saw this movie, I wanted to feel kind of uncomfortable. I wanted the feeling that I had uh, when I was going now that I'm home in the dark and I should uh, right now I'm in the dark in my neighborhood and I I should feel scared But I honestly don't because this movie didn't really make me feel like I should be Scared to sleep at night, you know, and that's the biggest disappointment about this movie You know, it has some great visual style that I rem that, that reminded me of films like like Stanley Kubrick would have made or uh, uh, David Fincher uh, and it is, it, I, I, I left the theater feeling very underwhelmed and it's quite a shame. I really wish the filmmakers would have took more of a chance with this story. And I think they spent more time on making it something visually stunning, visually stimulating, I mean, but, and then you, you, you don't really care as the movie goes on and on. And on, the movie is two and a half hours. Now, I would say you don't have to see this movie in the theater, sadly. Yes, for its visual, visual look, it's worthy of seeing in the theater. But not for two and a half hours, maybe for an hour and 45 minutes. So I think if you're a fan of Gore Rabinsky and you feel like you have to see everything he did in the theater, maybe go see it. But if you're someone who just wants to see something visually stunning, I'd say wait until you can rent it at home for free somehow. Uh, don't go to the theater to see the movie. It is such a disappointment. And I will give it a slight positive grade because for an hour and a half, I was captivated by what I was witnessing just because of the way the movie looked and the way the movie felt. Sadly, it goes on for another 45 minutes and I was like, oh, I wish you would just wrap it up. And the way it does wrap it up made me even more sad and depressed because it was just the safe route. It was felt like I was at the end of a video game and I was ready just to beat the last boss guy. And then I get some, I didn't even get it. I, I, I got through all that. And then the ending scene was just like credits. And you're just like, dang it. This movie should be an incredible, overwhelming, amazing, visually and story driven and character driven masterpiece. In the end, it is sadly a shallow, beautiful looking film. And for that, I am going to give a, a cure for wellness, which I wish cured me of the feelings I have right now and showed me something that I'd never seen before and took me to a world that I've never been and amazed me and made me think about my own world and reality. Sadly, it did none of that except for visually stimulate me. And I'm gonna give the film just two, two no, because it was damn good looking. I will give it, you're being very nice to me now, movie. Because I think about you and I look at you and I say, wow, it just is such a amazing looking film. 
But what went wrong? I don't know. Why can we have got a more compelling and interesting story? All right, film. The rant, the raving is over. And because you were a beautiful thing to look at for at least an hour and 45 minutes, I will give you two and a half stars out of four. Wow, that's it. It's raining. I don't know what I'm gonna do now. I got nothing to do right now. So I can't edit it. I can't put it on YouTube yet. So I guess I'm gonna go out and enjoy life somewhere else, maybe get a workout in and we'll see. Anyways, let me know in the comment box below, have you seen this film? What did you think of A Cure for Wellness? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know. Goodbye. See you later. I'm going back to wherever I came from. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and share this video. And also, please check out these amazing movie websites. And if you enjoyed this review, please click here to subscribe to my channel. And also, please check out all my recent reviews right here on YouTube. Have a great day. Live film. Find peace, happiness, and harmony in anything and everything you do. And I'll talk to you at my next movie review.